This is ESPN Crick Info. Hello and welcome to Talking T20. We're back after a week's break and this time we're discussing a breed of cricketers who it was expected that they had absolutely no place in the big hitting world of the T20 game. Um, oh, what are you spinners? talking about? <laughs> Seriously. Got my mate here, the keeper. We keep feeding them. Come on, spinners are, spinners was, are the king. Hoggy, I was going to introduce you by saying that we are. No, well, if you're going to introduce <laughs> us with that sort of rubbish, okay, that we're not involved in T20 cricket, well, we've got to it get was, on the front foot. I said, I said it was expected that you had absolutely no place in the Again, we have somebody who's dismissed Chris Gale, Brendan McCollum, Virendra Sehwag, and many others, and he can oh, count so, them. Don't forget about this. Sachin Tendulkar in there. I know it was this? only one. Who's this? Welcome to the show, Hoggy. <laughs> 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 right. Right. Oh, sorry, I'll put you off there, haven't no I? Worries. You're on a backward foot. And, and, and back on the show after a few weeks, fresh from his uh, travels across the country for the IPL, Deep Das Gupta, welcome back. Thank you, thank you so much. Good to be back. And uh, tell as you what, always, he's my favourite partner yeah. too. I love a keeper by side me. Yeah. yeah. Who can yes. pick your wrong ones? Yeah, well, the problem the is the problem is he'd never want me bowling because I'd never <laughs> give him a stat. I couldn't get it past the bat. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so we have two cricketers in the house for the first time and uh, as always we have our in-house data whiz, Gaurav Sundaraman. Gaurav, welcome back. Thank you. Right, Hoggy, let's try and start with you here. Let's try and have you talk through a typical wrist spinner's routine. You're at the top of your mark and you have Chris Gale against you, up against you. Talk us through what your routine is. When do you decide what to bowl to him? Is there a scope for you to change it last minute depending on where he moves? How do you bowl to a, a marauding batsman in T20 cricket? I think when you're bowling in the shorter form of the game, you're always looking for those sudden movements that the batsman makes. Uh, I do a lot of research before I go out and play and just research what ticks with the batsman when uh, they're sort of giving signals when they want to charge or they want to sweep because they do give those type of signals. I, d I remember uh, Glenn Maxwell, for instance. Uh, he will always telegraph that he's going to reverse sweep by looking in that direction where he's going to hit the ball. Going back to Chris Gale, you want to try and get the ball out of his hitting zone. And uh, there was a time there where I was having a bit of success attacking him on the pads. He worked it out. He started to sweep me, and then I tried to go wider, and that put it in his hitting arc. And uh, every now and then I'd get him out with a wrong one, but most of the time he'd be able to clear the, uh, clear the picket. So you really had to be on a good line of length. So I'd be trying to get on a good line in length if it was turning. If it wasn't turning, I'd just be trying to bowl a Yorker at his toes and get him off strike. Yeah. Deep, talking of signals, how he spoke yeah. about what signals the batsman gives. We yeah. keep talking about batsmen not picking a leg spinner and yeah. his variations. As a mm. keeper, it's equally important for you behind the stumps and yep. how early you can pick a wrist spinner out of his hand or whatever. Yeah. What are the signals that you picked up and how important is it for you to pick him from the hand? So the first thing that you do is when you play against someone that has variations like Hoggy would. So you, before the game, you would take him to the net session and say, bowl a few to me, uh, bowl a couple of, uh, you know, variations or whatever you've got, and then try and pick it. So now, uh, if it's easy or whatever, if you're picking it, it's fine. If you're not, then comes the second part of it when you start saying, okay, listen, I'm not picking your googly or something, start telling me about it before you bowl one. Signal something like uh, a tap on your head or something like that. So I know that you're bowling what you're bowling. Uh, but first things first, I think you've got to practice single wicket because without the batsman and try and uh, let the bowler bowl all the variations that he's got so you pick those variations. Generally, you would pick those variations. As a keeper, you're, you're tuned or you're, you're, you're kind of taught to pick those variations. Uh, simple things like I was, I was talking to um, Saha the other day as in how you're picking Rashid's Kugli. Uh, what he said was his angle of his hand. Is like if uh, the googly that he bowls is like straight arm, the arm's very straight, uh, with the leg spinners is a little uh, like around 15 degrees from perpendicular kind of a thing. I'm glad you said 15 degrees. No, he did not say 15 <laughs> degrees. So he, he explained that to me in our in our mother tongue, which is Bengali. So I'm just kind of uh, paraphrasing it. So it's it's like a little side arm his leg spinners are, and those are those those subtle changes that you tend to pick. For example, with Anil, uh, first thing I did was asked him you know, in a net session to bowl those googlies and stuff like that. And then I figured out that his, uh, you know, his, his, his little finger would go up for the googly and he would hold the ball a little differently, grip it a little differently for his googlies and all. Those are certain uh, subtle changes that a bowler makes and as a keeper, it's imperative that you pick those up. As a keeper, yeah. you, you pick the ball a lot easier from the spinner. Mm -hmm. How different is it from keeping to batting? So that's the reason I say uh, 
when, when I see a wicket keeper not picking a spinner, I'm, I'm a little surprised because as a, as a keeper, you're supposed to pick those things. You're trained to pick those things. And, and you would actually see it. Uh, keepers pick the difficult bowlers a little more easy, uh, be it Rashid Khan or Mujib or the others. Uh, keepers have that advantage, a little more advantage than a regular batsman. We've spoken quite a bit about subcontinental conditions. You've played your T20 cricket in almost eight or nine countries through the course of your career. Is it the same outside the subcontinent? Is it is it different in terms of how much purchase spinners get and, and how easy it is for keepers to pick or how, how much more difficult it is? Uh, look, wherever you change, you've got to adapt. Sometimes you've got to be a little quicker here in India where it, it, in Australia you can slow it down a little bit. But uh, with T20 cricket, when they're after you, generally you're trying to bowl it quicker anyway and not allow the batsman to get out of the crease. You don't mind them sweeping off good length, especially in Australia with that extra bounce, it's a difficult shot to control. Whereas here, you probably just want to be a little bit shorter than in Australia because you don't have that extra bounce and it doesn't allow the batsman to play freely. So uh, if you look at the meterage here, I think it's between five and six metres length. In Australia, you're probably looking at five to four metres to land the ball. Um, so th that's the important. It's more the length. Uh, that you've got to adjust than the line uh, and you just got to adapt to the different types of uh, turn that you're getting off the wicket. Mm -hmm. If you're not getting any turn, you've got to adapt and just try and cramp the batsman up and just limit the damage by just letting the batsman get ones off you and keep that economy rate down so that the quick bowlers, hopefully, with that extra pace, can do the damage at the end. Mm -hmm. But when it's turning and there's not much in it for the pace, you want the pace bowlers to start bowling Yorkers, uh, death type bowling early on to keep the pressure on so that when you're bowling, the, the batsman has to come after you when you're landing it on a good length and it's turning and it's a difficult shot to play. So there's a lot of teamwork there and uh, you, you've just got to uh, well stop your ego in a sense when it's not turning and just say, right, it's not my day today, I've just got to limit the damage. It's as simple as that. And when, when you're on and it's turning, you don't want to get too ahead of yourself either because um, sometimes you bowl a lot, of, a lot of rubbish when the conditions are suited to you because mm -hmm. you think you've got to do the job. I'll come back to you on wickets versus runs because the leg spinner traditionally has become a person or a, or a, or a bowler whose role is now to pick up wickets and uh, you know stop the flow of runs and break partnerships. But Gaurav uh, Hoggy didn't let me finish my statement on spinners. What's the big deal with wrist spinners in T20s? It's more of a recent phenomenon. In the last seven, eight years, you've seen drafts and auctions, wrist spinners going for big money. What's the biggest change you've seen in T20 cricket and why are wrist spinners so sought after? I think one of the biggest reasons is the ability to pick wickets. We saw the first few years, we saw a lot of finger spinners doing very well. Uh, Warren did exceedingly well uh, in the first three years. Kumble did well, but we didn't have uh, uh, too many guys, lo local domestic players actually coming through. But then uh, I think from uh, maybe 2013, we saw a complete shift where we saw the spinners starting to do very well. We saw the likes of our Kuldeep, uh, which is again a variety in T20. And off spinners were not picking wickets. Your number one bowlers, Ashwin and Jadeja, for example, uh, they did struggle in parts, and but they, they used to control the innings. So I, I, how I personally look at finger spinners now in the IPL is or any T20 league are control bowlers and the wrist spinners are more attacking options where they look to take wickets. So maybe when a wrist spinner and a finger spinner bowl together, it becomes that powerful combination. I'm not for only having spinners in the squad. I think you need that variety. And even this year, if you actually look at the numbers, uh, it's come down very uh, kind of even from the last season. Last season it was biased towards this spin. Now it's the if you see the economy rate, it's 7.9 each, which is great. But obviously in terms of strike rates, uh, 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 spinners are slightly ahead. But not the margins, not too much. And mm -hmm. yes, you have Mujib and Rashid and Naren. And Mujib and Naren, to be honest, I think none of us know what uh, classification <laughs> they come under. Is it off spinner, leg yeah. spinner? So as mystery of now, spin. mystery that, spinners. That was my question. Now, how do you rate? How do you, yeah. So yeah. that's the new. Uh, uh, we need a new uh, uh, new classification called mystery yeah. spinners yeah. but yeah it's a fascinating and I'm, I slowly see that finger spinners also coming back into the game both of you have been around the country now mm -hmm. watching these games watching IPL mm -hmm. games have you seen teams starting to play out the wrist spinners considering how well they've done uh, I'll, I'll couple of things have happened one is obviously as God have mentioned there was a couple of years ago there was like get leg spinners just get leg spinners now I think there's a filtration process now you're kind of filtering the better leg spinners through so you won't see as many leg spinners as you saw last year or a couple of years ago. So that, that is one process. Secondly, I would disagree with Gaurav on, on, on this certain point about finger spinners and wrist spinners because I think someone like Mujib, 
he bowls leg spin. He bowls leg spin and googly. I know if you go to his profile and everything else, it says off spinner, but he never bowls off spin. He started off as an off spinner. He grips the ball like an off spinner, but he's predominantly a carom ball bowler and the googly bowler with that same grip. The other part would be say someone like Ashwin, who started to bowl a lot of leg spin as well, as in proper orthodox leg spin. Uh, so I think uh, it's very difficult now to pinpoint and say, oh, he is a leg spinner, he is an off spinner. Uh, that's one thing. Secondly, I think there are uh, quite a few left-handers now as well. Left-hand batsmen I'm talking about. Yeah. So what happens is uh, earlier on there would be predominantly right-hand batsmen and with the leg spinner taking the ball away from you, what was away from the hitting zone as Hoggy mentioned a while ago. With left, uh, left-hander left batsmen coming in, every team you see there will be at least a, a couple of left-handers in the batting order. And they kind of planning it out in terms of, okay, if Suresh Raina is there, he tries to play out the leg spinner or something like that. So, so the planning has improved as well. Okay, uh, even within wrist spinners, mm -hmm. you were a special breed. I can literally count the number of left-arm wrist spinners who've come to international cricket or mm -hmm. played at the highest level. What was that X factor that you saw that you had coming, with the, coming in with the left arm, left armer's angle with the wrist spin? I mean, did you have an X factor compared to even the right hand spinners and even I, the mistakes? I never spinners? really ever thought about it, really. I, I just had a job to do, and that job was to you know, either take wickets or keep the uh, run rate down. And with, it, with the teams that I've been involved in, I've been very lucky to have some quality quick bowlers out the other end, whether it's for Australia, West Australia, or even the Perth Scorchers as such. Uh, I think with the Perth Scorchers, we've had so much success because we've got a very strong bowling unit and if you look at Sunrisers Hyderabad they've got a very strong uh, bowling unit and if you look at the um, averages now you look at Sunrisers Hyderabad they've got four pace bowlers in the top 50 wicket takers of IPL all of an economy rate under eight and then you've got Rashid Khan and uh, Shakib economy rates under eight and uh, so for me Taking wickets is about applying pressure. You've got to bowl defensive bowling. Yep. You've got to keep the pressure on the batsman. At the end of the day, the batsman's the one that makes the mistake. If you keep applying the pressure, they've got to take a risk. I, th I think we get overawed by this attacking type of bowling. If you don't get the ball in the right area <laughs> and you're bowling a, you've bowled a perfect swing ball, which is a half yep. volley, it's going to go for four in that power play. Yep. Uh, most of the time. So you've got to get the ball in the right areas. You've got to be defensive. It's a defensive game. And um, as, as with Sunrise's Hyderabad, they've come out of sticky situations when they haven't got enough runs yeah. because they're able to play decent defensive bowling as but, a unit. But if you just look at mindsets traditionally, you, you say that wickets are more important, the power play containing the run flow at the death. Did you have different approaches to bowling in different phases? Because you mentioned that landing the ball in the right area with the defensive mindset is important. Did it vary across phases in the game? Uh, no, it didn't really for me. Uh, it, it, the only time I ever thought about going for a wicket was when the game was getting out of control and we needed to break the partnership. And that was a discussion with the captain. Uh, I, I remember Shane Warne talking about test cricket. When I've got an attacking field, I'm bowling boring, uh, boring balls. I'm just bowling defensively all the time. When I've got the field spread, that's when I bowl a lot more variations. Now, in T20 cricket for me, I've, I've got a lot of variations, but my key ball is the wrong one to the right-hander. Uh, to the left-hander, I've got to get the wrong one out early, but it's normally the flipper or the backspinner. But I've got to make sure I've set them up for it, I've bowled tight, and if I'm under tr pressure, and those balls aren't landing, what ball do I go to that gets me out of the uh, four overs with the limited damage? And I, I think that's, that's one thing that um, I learned very early on in my international career. Uh, a baseballer, a fielding coach, Mike Young, mm. was sitting on the team bus, and I said, oh, my wrong one wasn't coming out well today, my back spinner, my flipper, they all weren't coming out well today. And he said to me, the best pitchers in uh, the NBA or the National Basketball MLB, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, American Bas Baseball yeah. League, they go to the ball that they uh, feel most comfortable with and just pitch that ball all night and just limit the damage and get yeah. out of it. And, uh, you know, it's the same with T20 cricket. If you're not feeling confident, just go to that ball which limits the damage. And so it's all, it's all mindset. Got of uh, just coming back. We'll discuss captaincy and how, hap how captains handle spinners today. There's a lot of shift in where spinners have been used. Now, today, I think this season, there have been more spinners bowling in the power play than in the first two put together. That's the amount of spin that's being used. 
What's the mindset shift that has happened here and why are captains using more and more spinners in the power play? I think it's more to do with the opposition. I think there's so much of matchups and so much of planning which goes to before the game. And uh, if you look, I was just uh, looking at some numbers uh, earlier today about the overseas batsmen playing against spin. Mm. Uh, their strike rate's about 120, whereas against pace, it's about 150. So clearly, they're the, either you, even if you don't get wickets, you know they're not going to go uh, helter skelter with you. So I think most of the planning is around who the opposition is, who the batsman is, whether he has a history of playing spin well. And you do have some overseas, like Kane Williamson, I don't think he's still got out to spin this season. Mm -hmm. So you know that he's a good player of spin. So uh, ideally, then you wouldn't want to uh, bowl a spinner or your best bowlers. And also, whether which phase of the game. Again, depends on the situation you're in, again, opposition, uh, uh, whether you're batting first or batting second. Uh, we've seen Mujib try a couple of, Ashwin try Mujib a couple of times in a death and both times he was hit once by Rohit Sharma, once by Ibi Villiers. So maybe under pressure, young guy, he doesn't, but uh, maybe some other day while batting first uh, or by bowling first for that matter, Mujib might get you know, three wickets. I think he did uh, against Rajasthan, mm -hmm. he got three wickets, you know. So it's a completely, it's more situation dependent rather than you go with a fixed plan. Uh, but yeah, the good thing is, I'm sure the Hoggy will also agree with me that spinners are willing to bowl the tough overs now. And especially in a death, I think it's an option which teams have underused. Uh, only uh, Rashids and Narains have been bowling. But it's always worth a shot uh, getting these uh, spinners to bowl some difficult overs as well. We, we, didn't see, we didn't see any of this happen back in the day when yeah. you were playing, the yeah. mid-2000s. T20 yeah. was still in, an, in its infancy yeah. and we were still getting used to it. There was absolutely no data, if I'm mm. not wrong, during that time. Yeah. Yeah. What's the shift that you've seen during your career as well? You've been inside a team's dugout, you've been mm. a broadcaster since. What's changed? I think the mindset, uh, to a great extent, initially T20, especially the, from the bowling perspective, was containing. Right? So you would contain, contain, contain. And, but now it's not about contain, it's about picking wickets. Yes, as Hoggy mentioned, you cannot, I mean, as a bowler, you cannot just, you know, turn up and say, I'm going to pick up wicket this ball, right? So you have to go through the whole process of keeping it tight and all. But the mindset is still to pick wickets now as compared to when it started, when I played a few T20 games. Uh, it was more of containing. That was one. Secondly, I think uh, there are too many shots now in, in the repertoire as well of a batsman. Not all of them are always successful. So batsmen are ready to take more chances against a spinner. Uh, so I think spinner, and if, and if you look at last few years of, of international cricket and across all formats, every time there is deviation, whether it's in the air or off the pitch, batsmen have struggled, irrespective of which country you're from. If it's seeming or if it's turning, batsmen have struggled. So that gives that edge to the spinners a little more than the fast bowlers, because fast bowlers when the ball gets old and in T20, it doesn't get old enough for the ball to reverse more often than not. Uh, so it's more pace and bounce that you're relying on. But with the spinner, they have, still have that option of deviation of the pitch, which I think makes spinner uh, spinning options a lot more viable now than fast bowling more often than not. And I think if you look at the spinners in the power play too, uh, Kolkata Knight Riders, they have to go for spin because they had the injury yeah. of Mitchell Stark and they don't have those real attacking fast bowlers in that power play. Mitchell, Mitchell Johnson, Johnson hasn't been great either. Yeah, yeah well, it, it's different conditions than in Australia. He's not getting the same zip off the wicket, so he has to bowl differently. They have to bowl a different plan, and uh, they, they don't... Well, they've got Narayan there, but they want to leave him in the middle overs because of his attacking ability there when the ball turns mm -hmm. a little bit more. So they don't have that off-spinner, but Rajasthan Rawls, Gotham over the last couple of games has done exceptionally well. He's keeping it tight. I thought Axel Battelle the other night, he was just a little too offside-ish and that allowed Butler to hit him over, over cover. Now, for me, if you're a left armer, you're trying to hit the leg stump, trying to uh, cramp the batsman off, uh, up, the right-hander, and let him work you uh, on the leg side. You have a short mid-wicket. And if you're looking to tempt him to go over cover, you go wider and make him reach for the ball. And if you go wider with the new ball, it's got more of a chance to turn because uh, generally the new ball skids on especially when you're coming around the wicket. So you've got to give yourself a chance and straighten up the angle as much. Yeah, so the you, angle, you, yeah. I've described that right because yeah. if you're coming around the wicket attacking the stumps, you, yeah. you, you, the ball's got to do a lot more yeah. to turn. But if so you go straight, what he's saying is with that body position, that body angle, if you're trying to pitch it on the stump, you're actually pushing the ball through with the angle rather than giving it a tweak. Yeah. So when that angle changes to outside off stump, so it's more straightforward and your body is not going across as much. So you're getting more purchase if you're 
uh, bowling outside the off stump. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly right. And the, the ball turns a little bit more wider. It, it, you know, the batsman's going to swing. You, you don't have those deep cover fielders, but the chance of the batsman controlling the stroke um, is less. So then you're giving yourself the option of getting that breakthrough. And that, that's the only time you take that risk is when you've kept it tight and the bowler at the other end has kept it tight and you know that he's going to come after you. But I'd, I'd still try and keep it tight so, anyway. So essentially what you're saying is the wicket-taking ball only comes after a, a series of pressure yeah, building oh, from oh, both exactly which, right. yeah. which is sort of... Exactly, yeah. which exactly is sort of traditional right. yeah. uh, wisdom that we have. Now, the... the, the well, look, if, you, if you look at uh, Tar here, for example, he's got an str- um, economy rate of nine throughout this tournament. But he's going for wickets all the time, but his control yeah. uh, isn't the control that we expect of an international cricketer. And he, his performances aren't... Uh, out his standard, uh, what, what we've seen of him. The reason being is that he's after wickets because the rest of the bowling attack in that Chennai Super Kings team, the pace attack, aren't really getting the breakthroughs. They aren't keeping it tight. So uh, they're very lucky with their batting lineup, which has kept them in this tournament. So he's going after wickets. He's bowling full, to- uh, full tosses, half volleys, short trackers. Every now and then he gets it in the right area. And when he gets wickets... He's bowled six balls in that right area and the batsman has to go after him. Uh, when he hasn't got wickets, he's just been too short, mm-hmm. too full. We saw this with Rashid as well. I mean, Rashid was taken for runs a couple of times and mm-hmm. the other guys had to make up during those days. Even within wrist spinners and specific categories of spinners, do you see a different uh, different style of approach between two sets of spinners as Hoggy spoke about? There's a Tahir, there's a Rashid, depending on how the other guys go, the approach changes completely. Yes, I was uh, reading a Rashid interview where he talks about the speed. And he says that uh, the, the fact that he bowled so quickly is his strength. And whereas you have some uh, leg spinners who maybe uh, their strength is the drift or their strength is to uh, flight the ball and, and then get the wicket. So I think each bowler has their own strength. And uh, like in the same interview, he was also talking about the fact that uh, people his length was too full. So he's now realised that if he's so quick, he has to bowl uh, a good length or slightly shorter of good length, not even short. So uh, margin of error is so less. Mm. So, mm. you know, the other question which I wanted to pose, Hoggy, at the same thing is, how does this kind of skill translate into the longer form? Because you have a Rashid and Narain who haven't done really well in the longer form of the game. So with Afghanistan getting test status and they're going to be playing a lot of games, do you think this approach would work in the longer form or would, just, would it be difficult for him? If he's going in the longer form, he's, he can't bowl the wrong one as much as he can because players are sitting on him and he's not getting attacked as much. So he's got to bowl that boring type of uh, cricket, a bit like Shane Warne. He doesn't have the big turning leg break, okay? Right, that's a weakness of his in the longer form. But how can we turn it into a strength? By just consistent line and length, having the right fields. So uh, you, you've got to know your bowler. And, and, and continuing on with your point there, Captains have got to understand that, uh, what type of bowler they've got. Yep. It, just because he's a leg spinner doesn't mean he's a Shane Warne or doesn't mean he's a Rishi Khan. We look at uh, um, uh, Khan Sharma from yep. Chennai Super Kings. He's a slower type of bowler. Uh, he can't bowl that five or six metre length in India. He's got to be a little fuller because if you've seen in this tournament, players are playing on the back foot, cutting him easily, pulling him easily, that he's not getting the batsman to come forward. Yep. So you've uh, then there's other bowlers that don't turn it as much. Gotham doesn't turn it uh, as much, especially in the power play. Yep. So, right, what fields do we have? Where's his strength? Yep. Uh, okay, every now and then it does turn a bit, and that's going to bamboozle. Yep. So the captain has got to know the strength yep. of the bowler. Just, and, talking of, and talking of captains, just circle back to your debut all the way back in 2004. You came on to bowl after Ian Bell and Jonathan Trott. You were the sixth bowler for Warwickshire. And you came on to bowl in the second half of the innings. The question I'm going to ask you is, over these 13, 14 years you've played T20 cricket, what captains told you would have completely changed from the beginning of T20 cricket? What's the biggest change in captains and how they used to risk spinner like you, who had only four overs, limited resources? What's the biggest change? The biggest change for me is, uh, well, there's no change really. It's about having the captain understand what you're about, having the captain understand your personality and having the captain understand your skills. And uh, actually, I was explaining to someone the other day, or having a chat um, with one of the captains, Nasser Hussain, and uh, we're talking about the DRS. So my personality, I'm excitable, I'm uh, always up, and if I wrap it in the pads, yeah, it's definitely out. And I just said to him, so 
me bowling in your team, and I said, oh, yeah, that's out, what would you do? And he said, generally, with your personality, I'd say, no, we're not going to DRS, <laughs> all right? And, uh, but then he'd have other bowlers which he would agree with. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he, on my sense, he'd go to the keeper rather than me because of my personalities. Yeah. So a captain's got to understand you as a person, know your skills, know what makes you tick. Uh, because if you don't know all those three things, yeah. you're not getting the best out of your players. No, the, the more specific question I wanted to ask you is, now that the format has evolved and you have a lot more data and precedence to go back to, where are captains now more aggressive in using their spinners? I'll come to you as well, Deep. Um, look, I, I don't think the captains that I've been involved with have been aggressive. Because uh, at the end of the day, my plan was, all right, I knew which batsman I was on top of, I knew which batsmen were sort of played me a little better, so I understand that. All right, I've got to be a little bit more defensive. I could be a little bit more attacking, depending which batsmen are out there. So I've got to understand that game. But the moment I get ahead of myself is the moment that I allow the batsmen to come in because I go over aggressive, and as soon as you go over aggressive, you bowl too many variations you start to lose that line and length and you start to lose the control and you start to lose the pressure that you're applying on that batsman. Mm. Uh, well, oh. aggressive in the sense of, I'd, I'd say they prefer more quality spinners. If you see in this IPL itself, you have at least two teams which plays with three spinners, right? Uh, Kings Eleven and KKR. Mm. Uh, so obviously they would prefer spinners and the reason that I look into is is the fact that I mentioned a while ago. I mean, variation of the pitch, it's difficult for the batsman to kind of read. I mean, if you look at Mujib, for example, uh, he's, he's a very good bowler, but I still find it difficult to figure out why batsman can't read his googly from his leg spin. Mm -hmm. Because he's, his normal leg spin, which is a carom ball, comes from the front of his hand, the googly obviously back of his hand, and it's, it's a little difficult to kind of figure out why they aren't picking him. Yes, I mean, you pick him, you still make mistake, that happens, but not picking him, it's difficult to understand, like, top domestic and international batsmen. So I think that's one of the reasons I believe your spinners are preferred more, uh, especially in the middle overs, uh, because they have that ability to kind of turn the ball off the pitch. Who was the guy talking of picking a leg spinner? Who was the guy you found, who was the guy you found hardest to pick? I thought Rashid Khan was the toughest to pick for me. And that's the reason I called us <laughs> up and like, listen, I can't pick this guy up. You tell me uh, how you picking him. And uh, because I don't see too much of a difference in his action. I mean, it's a very marginal, subtle difference. Uh, and when I look at his, his action, I mean, it seems even his leg spinners are coming from the back of his hand. Yeah. You know, so every time he bowls, it seems like, oh, it's a googly, but it's not. It, it's a leg spinner as well. So I, I think uh, Rashid, yes, uh, is, is, is very difficult to pick and there is no change in the pace. If you look at a lot of spinners and, and Hoggy will agree with me, your googlies are quicker than your leg spin. Yeah. Right? Your, your pace of your googlies because it's back of the hand, your arm speed is a little quicker. So your googlies are, are a lot quicker than your leg spin. So by the pace of it as well, you can figure out. But when I look at Rashid, there's not too much of a difference in terms of the pace of the ball as well uh, with Kukli and his legs. And is there any spinner in your days whom maybe he may not have played for India or mm -hmm. in the domestic circuit? Did you find someone who was extremely difficult to pick? Uh, Anil was because he, he wasn't a big turner, right? Yeah. So he was a very high arm uh, Faster action, variations. Faster yeah. variations. Yeah. And especially if you're playing on a turner, uh, it was a nightmare. Because <laughs> obviously, I mean, the... the uh, the variations were very minuscule in terms of the turn, variation of the pitch, uh, and also the pace with which he bowled. I mean, he wouldn't allow you to step out, right? So you're like stuck on the crease, so the only option you have, even back foot, you think twice before pulling and cutting him because of the pace of the pitch as well, uh, which someone like Hoggy has uh, has here. He's not retired as yet, so he still <laughs> has it. Yeah. yeah, so you know, Rashid Khan, so uh, they don't give you that time. So. In terms as a batsman also, one of your options are taken away because you think really hard before you step out or predominantly be a, a premeditated step out kind of a thing. Hoggy, from among the current crop, who are the wrist spinners you rate extremely highly from the guys who are playing right now? Oh, look, Rashid Khan's got to be up there in the shorter form of the game, but um, yeah, it's, it's very hard, really. Uh, there, there's, there's a lot of quality spinners out there. Uh, Tahir's done well, but... Um, 
for me, you've got to be able to be... Cool deep, no? Uh, well, cool deep's up there as well, but you've got to be adaptable for all forms of the game. Has anyone been uh, adaptable yet? Um, mm. uh, the Pakistan leg spinner? Uh, Shadab Khan. Shadab Khan. Yeah, Shadab Khan. Mm. I was just trying to figure out which Khan it was. <laughs> um, but he's, he's probably been the pick of them because he's mm. adapted to all forms of the game. So uh, that, that tells me a quality spinner to uh, an average spinner or... Mm. Well, if you're good at T20 cricket, you're not an average spinner or 50 over, mm-hmm. but he's, he's an exceptional talent. Mm-hmm. And when I look at batsmen as well, I look at the same, uh, same aspect. You, you look at your Coley's and Davilius. Mm-hmm. They dominate all forms of the game. So they are a cut above the rest. So, um, yes, Khan from Pakistan. Last bit is basically measuring the performance. We often read scorecards. We see spinners going for runs sometimes. Have there been days in your career when you felt and your team management has felt that you've bowled really well? But on the scorecard, it doesn't reflect as much. I'll tell you that my best figures, uh, I don't know what they are, I don't know what the was figures it your, were. Was it your debut? No, was it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Four for nine. Four for nine, who was that for? Warwickshire. Warwickshire, yeah. No, I think I did the same uh, against oh. Adelaide as well uh, oh, yeah. when uh, I was playing for WA. But that particular game, mm-hmm. I, um, I went skiing three days before, and I was skiing all day because I hadn't done it for about five years. And my shoulders were that stiff. I was uh, out the whacker. We had nets out the top. Yeah. I could not land the ball on the pitch. I was hitting the top net and hitting it. <laughs> so the day before the game, I'm hitting the top net and the bottom net, and we're warming up for this T20 game and Bruce Reed is catching the ball, I am hitting him on the full and I'm going, Bruce, I am in trouble. I have not landed one in the last three days and i got four for nine there too. <laughs> you should go skiing every game, yeah, man. But I, I bowled, I, I think all I bowled was Yorkers. I don't know how they landed, but yeah, but you have days where um, you, you bowl, you bowl mm. a whole pile of hogwash. Uh, mind the punt, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> so, and you end up with five for thirty-five, and then you bowl your best, and yeah. you, you just don't get a wicket. And mm. but that's that's the thing about a team game. If you're applying pressure at the other end, uh, or the teammates are applying pressure at the other end, it makes your job easier down here. So uh, you, you've got to understand the, the the moment of the match. And when we talk about aggression. Um, just my final point, when, when you talk about aggression and taking wickets, it's not about bowling the ball to take the wickets all the time. It's about setting the batsman up with mm. pressure-type bowling. If you look at Shane Warne, he'll say that he's going to do w- what he's going to do and something's going to happen, he's going to get the edge. It doesn't happen by chance. It happens because he's created the pressure yeah. and that particular ball that he's bowled, the batsman, if he's going to score, it's going to be a one. It's, it's uh, very highly unlikely that it's going to be a boundary. So he's bowled a ball, the, the percentages are in his favour. That's aggression. Bowling yeah. the ball with the percentages in your favour. Last, I'll just end on a nostalgic note and I'll ask both of you. We've all been yeah. watching cricket and you've been playing cricket yeah. for more than two decades now. Did you expect when T20 began that we'd be sitting here one day and talking about spinners being royalty and, you know, spinners just changing the game in the shortest format where the batsmen seem mm. to have all the advantages? Did you expect any of this? Uh, honestly, not really. I'll be very, very honest. I, I didn't really think. But uh, but I never thought they'll be out of the system, so to say, because there was a lot of uh, talk in the initial couple of years that, oh, it's the end of spinners and all that. Never thought, because, uh, listen, it's an evolving game. Cricket itself is involving him. Forget the format. Uh, we've seen people changing and all. You know, cricket's changing. Cricket is changing over uh, different eras. Uh, so never thought uh, they'll be out of the scene, but never thought they'll have that kind of an effect, to be honest. Gaurav? I think I agree with Deep to a certain extent because I've obviously been following it only on television mm-hmm. and... Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, seeing the IPL evolve. Radio. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you go back a long way. It's a radio as well. <laughs> you two have got no vision. Absolutely no vision. <laughs> In the sense, like, I, I used to idolise Shane Warne and he was one of the, and he started off doing so well in the IPL and uh, obviously we thought that a great test match, Kumble did well. So initial days you thought there were all these uh, test specialists doing extremely well here. But now it's completely changed. You have players who are just training only for T20s mm. who come in and just try to do well. Uh, and you have 17 years old, 18 years old. Mm. So no, like great players are not able to pick them. So uh, 
Yeah, the, the kind of variation they bring is something I didn't know. A couple of more uh, spinners coming out of Afghanistan. Which <laughs> yeah. Also yeah. Yeah. yeah, the kind of game changers they've become. Uh, like people are, like you said earlier, people are just playing them out. You know, that was not something which you would see before. But yeah, good, that, well done. Uh, Hoggy, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to come to you because you have proof that <laughs> yeah. spinners work <laughs> perfectly <laughs> well in the shortest format. Add, add, with, you you can, without any you age uh, bar. Yeah, that's the no best bar. part about Fit you. man's game, yeah. yeah, Fit man's <laughs> well, you, go, you go back to England uh, when I first started playing T20. Um, I think it was Adam Hollyhoke who bowled those medium paces mm, with medium, yeah. but, uh, just cutters and all that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, myself, we were the leading wicket takers right up till the final series. And um, I, I only got told of it because mm. we are going in and play the semi-final and <laughs> someone's going, oh, you're the leading wicket taker of Warwickshire, you're right. Yeah, whoop de doo um, But that, that, that sort of led me to think, right, hang on, we, we've got a big uh, chance of surviving in this mm. format. And um, it's like anything. It's like one-day cricket. We, mm. You know, you thought spinners yeah. might struggle there, mm. but they never ever get struggle because they've got a, a decent point. skill. So uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, great skill. But the the other well, we 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 keep you employed. Uh, we'll get the part time keeper employed. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, keep uh, keep, uh, keep uh, you employed. Absolutely. <laughs> no, no, he's, he's spot on with that. I mean, uh, yeah, because of variations and and bowlers like him, you need a proper keeper. But quickly on on that point, uh, see, you also have to figure out that when it all started, you didn't have so many spinners as well. If you see the leg spinners, especially the wrist spinners, they've come in in the last three four years. And I oh, credit this a lot to, you know, sp icons like Warney, Anil and all these okay. guys. Because that generation, people who grew up watching these guys are coming through now. So you see so many leg spinners because of that as well. If you think about 2007, 8 you didn't have too many spinners, okay, okay. right? So now this generation, obviously with the success of this generation as well, you'll see more uh, guys coming into it. But I thought, especially the leg spinners, Credit to Mushtaq, Anil, Wani, who yeah. made leg spin like the, yeah. as big as they are, uh, it is right now. Yeah. Absolutely. Very few things in cricket as delightful as seeing a leg spinner to see oh, a yes. batsman and get him. And that's the end of episode 4 of Talking T20. Absolute pleasure to have Brad Hogg and Deep Das Gupta on the show. Thanks, yeah. gentlemen. Yeah, Thank only you. episode 4. <laughs> episode 4, yeah. Oh, we're special. And, and, it's, and, it's, and it's the first time we have two cricketers in the show. We had Deep Brilliant. and uh, we had Sanjay earlier. And yeah. this time we have Hoggy and Deep on the show. Thanks Gaurav, thanks as ever for joining us and uh, you can now catch us on SoundCloud and hopefully very soon on iTunes and any other podcasting platform you listen to your podcast. Thanks and uh, join us next time. You are listening to ESPN Crick Info.